In the movie, in the year 2505, people have become much dumber over 500 years. U.S. Army librarian Joe Bowers wakes up in this messed up world after being in a sleep pot. He finds everything confusing and sees that the average IQ has gone very low. Joe's intelligence makes him stand out. Keep watching to know what happens next. At the start of the movie, it was explained that human evolution was at a key point. Many science fiction theories predicted that humans would become more advanced and smarter in the future. But instead of becoming better, humans began to get dumber over time. In this situation, U.S. Army Librarian Corporal Joe Bowers was, was asked by his superiors to join an important experiment. Joe, who had planned to work as a librarian until retirement, was unhappy but had to obey the orders. We then saw a private meeting with high-ranking military officers. General Collins shared his ideas with the other officials. He said that scientists had invented a special pod for human hibernation that could keep people preserved for an unlimited time. This way the best people could be kept in their prime and brought back when needed. Joe was chosen as the first test subject because he was an average man in the military and had no close family. They also needed a woman for the experiment but did not have a suitable candidate in the military. So, Allen selected a prostitute named Rita. He showed the officers pictures of himself and Rita's manager upgrade partying together, making everyone in the room feel uncomfortable he ended the presentation by saying that Joe and Rita would be placed into the pods the next day and that the experiment would last a year. Since the experiment was highly secret, the officials in the room were not allowed to share any information about it. The next day, Joe and Rita were in a waiting room together. Joe introduced himself and asked Rita what her job was. Rita didn't want to say she was a prostitute, though she said she was a painter. Then, both of them were given IVs and placed into two human hibernation pods. Rita became scared and tried to get out, but Joe assured her the scientists knew what they were doing. He told her they would be in the pods for only a year and everything would be fine. Finally, the two were sealed inside the pods. However, things started to go wrong when Officer Collins was arrested for trying to run a prostitution ring. Upgrade was also arrested for being the leader of the ring. Because of the scandal, the military base was shut down and the building with the pods was torn down. Joe and Rita remained in the pods as the years went by. Things were bad for Joe and Rita, but they were worse for everyone. Humans began to become much dumber at an alarming rate and the average intelligence continued to drop. Some people hoped that genetic engineering and science could fix the decline in human intelligence. For centuries, people had not figured out how to manage garbage it piled up with no solution. This led to a huge garbage landslide in 2505. One day, a massive pile of garbage caused Joe's hibernation pod to end up in a random house. Joe came out of the pod feeling dizzy and confused. The person in the house, named Frito Pendejo, ignored the garbage and Joe, focusing instead on strange TV shows. Frito only got up to tell Joe to be quiet and had a couch with a toilet built in so he wouldn't need to get up. Then, Frito kicked Joe out of the window. Joe found the outside world confusing and thought a lot had changed in just a year. But he didn't realize he had actually arrived in the year 2505. Joe saw people by the side of the road speaking in slang and making strange noises. He could understand them, but when he spoke normally, they called him names and chased him away. Feeling even more confused and dizzy, Joe decided to go to a nearby hospital. At the reception, he told the receptionist that he was from the army. The woman at the hospital didn't understand Joe's problem and just pressed a random button on her desk. A voice then told Joe to go to the diagnostic area on the right. Confused, Joe tried to get a drink of water from a fountain, but it gave him an energy drink called Brondo instead. When he asked someone where he could find water, the person laughed and said that water was only used in toilets. Everyone used Brondo for drinking bathing, and daily activities. Joe then went to the diagnostic area, where he had to put plugs into his mouth, ear, and anus. The health worker mixed up the plugs, and Joe felt disgusted, but completed the procedure. He was then sent to see a doctor. While waiting, Joe saw the date 2505 on a magazine, but thought it was a mistake. When the doctor arrived, he answered all of Joe's questions with kick-ass and called Joe retarded. The doctor also told Joe he owed $5 billion. Joe noticed 2505 on the bill and realized he had been in the pod for 500 years. 
He was shocked and went to the window, seeing the city in ruins. Buildings were collapsing and held together by ropes, and the city was covered in garbage. The doctor became alarmed when he saw Joe didn't have a citizen tattoo on his wrist. Joe panicked and ran from the hospital, while the doctor called the police for unpaid bills. A voice narrated that Joe had woken up in a world in crisis. The economy was in bad shape. A huge dust bowl had destroyed all the food supplies and the top movie in the country was called Ass. Joe went to see this Oscar-winning movie, only to spend 90 minutes staring at someone's behind. At night, Joe was arrested for being unscannable and taken to court. There, his lawyer turned out to be Frito Pendejo, the same person Joe had met when he first arrived in 2505. Frito made fun of Joe, and everyone in the court laughed at him. Joe tried to explain why he was unscannable, but the lawyer and judge just laughed. In the end, the judge found him guilty and sent him to jail. Meanwhile, Rita had also come out of the pod and was trying to contact her manager and boyfriend. Upgrade. She couldn't get through, because the phone demanded $2,000. She tricked a man she met into giving her money. At the same time, Joe was taken to a place where people got identification tattoos to make them scannable. When the machine asked for his name, Joe tried to explain that he was unsure about what was happening. The machine read his name as, Not Sure, and tattooed it on his wrist. People started calling him, Not Sure. Next, Joe took an amplitude and I2 test. He answered all the questions correctly and was surprised to see that the people around him couldn't even identify simple shapes. After that, he was sent to prison. Joe began to realize that everyone in this world was not very smart, told the guard he should be released from jail, and the clueless guard let him go. However, alarms went off, and the police started chasing him. Joe managed to escape and went back to Frito's place. Joe thought that someone had made a time machine in the last 500 years and asked Frito for help to find it. Frito didn't want to help Joe at first. Joe tricked him by promising to give him $8 billion. Eventually, Frito admitted that he knew where the time machine was. Just then, the police knocked on the door, looking for Joe. Joe and Frito escaped through the window and drove to the museum. On their way, they saw Rita, who was still tricking the same man. Rita got into the car and was worried that Upgrade would come after her for the money she owed, not realizing he was already dead. As they drove, something outside the car scanned Joe's wrist and alerted the police to his location. The car's battery then died, so they had to get out. Shortly after, police arrived and started shooting at the car. Many people gathered and began to fight. Joe, Frito, and Rita ran away, hoping to find the time machine. Joe took them to Costco, which had become the main place for trading. He even claimed that he had studied law there. While they waited for the metro, Rita went to the bathroom. Before she came back, Joe's wrist was accidentally scanned, and the whole place was alerted about a criminal. When the Metro arrived, Rito got on it, but Joe stayed behind to wait for Rita. Joe was soon caught by the police. This time, Joe was taken to the White House instead of prison. At the White House, Joe met President Camacho and his secretaries, looking very confused. Camacho made fun of Joe, saying he expected Joe's head to be bigger since he was so smart. Turned out that the IQ test Joe took in prison amazed everyone because he had the highest IQ they had ever seen. Because of this, the president appointed Joe as the new secretary of the interior. To Joe's surprise, they also named him the smartest man in the world. Everyone then went to the House of Representing, where the president announced that Joe, now known as Mr. Not Sure, would solve the problems of food shortages and dust storms. The president promised to forgive Joe's prison time if he succeeded. Next, a cabinet meeting was held, where the secretaries Joe to say something smart. Joe spoke some random, complicated words that made them think he was indeed smart. Joe then asked Frito to draw a map showing where the time machine was located while he distracted the secretaries. Later, Joe took the secretaries to a field where crops were supposed to grow. He also asked them to bring Rita, believing she might help with the crops. At the field, Frito secretly gave Joe the map. Rita arrived at the same time. Joe took her aside and planned to escape using the map. Joe's plan failed when he discovered that Frito's map was just a simple line. He then realized that people had been using the energy drink Brondo instead of water on the crops. Joe decided to hold a cabinet meeting to suggest using water instead of Brondo. Secretaries thought his idea was terrible. Instead of trying to convince them, 
Joe told them he could talk to the plants and they wanted water. Joe did not know that Brondo had caused salt to build up in the soil, which killed the plants and caused the dust storms. So he was actually fixing their problems. For a few days, everything went well. Soon, the supply of Brondo ran out because production had decreased, leaving many people unemployed. They started to riot outside the White House. The news reported that Joe was taken to court for causing unemployment and was found guilty. He was sentenced to one night in rehabilitation. In this new world, rehabilitation meant being chased by a large truck in an arena, while a crowd cheered for the truck. This usually ended with the criminal being killed. Joe was sent to the arena, while Rita sadly returned to the White House, ready to go to the time machine with Frito. The rehabilitation was shown on national television. Joe was chased by a huge truck while driving a small car. Rita noticed a rose plant growing outside and realized Joe's idea to water the plants had worked. She asked Frito to take her to the arena. Rita wanted to show the crops on television to get Joe's punishment canceled. Meanwhile, Joe was still trying to escape the death truck. Rita arrived just in time, bribed a cameraman to film the growing crops, and took control of the monitoring room. Rito filmed the crops and the clip was shown on the big screen. Seeing this, President Camacho stopped Joe's execution and pardoned him. Crowd cheered loudly. At a party in the White House, Rita said she didn't want to go back because she liked the future better. Joe was surprised but didn't force her to leave. Before Joe could leave, the president called him on stage and announced him as the new vice president. Everyone looked at Joe with hope and he agreed to stay in 2505. Later, someone called the time machine a stupid ride. Frito took a confused Joe to the machine which turned out to be a children's ride. A few months later, Joe was elected as the President of the United States and Rita became his wife and the First Lady. Under his leadership, people hoped humans would become smart again. Joe and Rita had three kids who were said to be the smartest kids in the world.